Sports Coliseum. Welcome into this presentation of college basketball on the ACC Network Extra. The number two team in the country, NC State, playing host to St. Mary's 2,800 mile trip for the Gales. We welcome you here courtside. Ernie Myers, Darren Vaught with you. NC State, Ernie, coming off of their first conference game of the season at Pitt, a massive win, and they did it mainly because of the three ball. Yeah, I don't know if it was raining outside in, in uh, Pittsburgh, but it was definitely raining inside <laughs> with three-point shots from NC State. Here you go there. Gia, Gia, did you get Brown Turner? Uh, 15 NC State players knocked down. Nine NC State players knocked down 15 three-pointers in that game. Yeah, there you see it. A great percentage, 15 of 33. Nine different players getting one to fall from beyond the arc for NC State. That is a program record, and they're shooting just a hair under 42% this season. You see their third in the NCAA. That's been a big part of their game so far this season. But for the Gales, they have an impressive story and post player, Ali Bamberger. She spent her freshman season at Washington, appeared in 27 games there. You see, battled through a couple of ACL injuries, earning her father, Eric, a two-time All-West Coast Conference player, 1,000-point scorer for the Gales. So she's back at her, her father's alma mater and doing big things, as you see there, 15.8 and 11.4 on the season. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the last two games, she's had, like, Wilt Chamberlain-type numbers, <laughs> 47 points and 37 rebounds. Unbelievable. Their last time out, it was a victory against Fresno State. The Gales took it 81 to 69. Bamberger had 25 points, 19 rebounds, and was 11 of 15 from the free throw line. So an interesting matchup with her and Elisa Kunain of the Wolfpack we're certain to see. And as we get set to tip things up, here atop K. Yao Court, you see the Wolfpack starting five, business as usual, Raina Perez, Kai Crutchfield, Jakia Brown-Turner, Kayla Jones, and Alyssa Kinane. Meanwhile, for St. Mary's, a little bit of a different look in their starting lineup without their leading scorer, Tacey Whedon. Yeah, it's going to be tough uh, without her in the game. It will be Kinane for the Wolfpack and West, Amy West, that is, the redshirt junior to tip things up for St. Mary's. As it goes to the Wolfpack, and we're off. Jakia Brown-Turner against Maddie Holland, the pass back. Quick jumper off front iron, and a quick one and done. Kai Crutchfield, no good on the jumper. St. Mary's starters you see here, Ali Bamberger, that big one, looking to fuel the Gales today as NC State comes away with the steal. Fast break, look isn't there. Crutchfield on the follow. I thought Crutchfield should have taken that shot. She got below the foul line area. Usually you just take the shot when you drive that deep into the lane. Still no score, Jade Kirasomi. A bounce out to the perimeter. Wolfpack starting out in man-to-man -man defense. Taylor Dalton drives the kick out, goes out of bounds. So a bit chaotic offensively to begin things. Couple of turnovers for the Gales. And for NC State, they're starting five. Headed up by Reina Perez, who ushers it into the front court. The Gabes are playing a man-to-man. -man. Seems like a matchup matchup type of zone that they're playing right here. Here's Kinane on the block. Draws the double team. Falling away. Can't get it to go. Kirasomi, a step into the lane. Nifty move to get it in off the window. And that's the first bucket. Karasomi with the nice left-handed shot to the basket. Wolfpack looking for a quick answer mid-range from the baseline off the mark, but Elisa Kunane in with the board and the putback. Elisa Kunane should be able to get that all day. 
in the paint. Nice offensive rebound. The All-ACC performer. The first points of the contest. A bit scuttled as of late as St. Mary's pops up possession once more. Well, there you see Westmore, ninth season at the helm of this NC State program. A win today would be number 200 for him as the Wolfpack head coach. National Coach of the Year, according to the WBCA last season. Bain kicks out to the corner, driving and missing the floater is Kayla Jones. The coach has uh, amassed almost like 200 victories here uh, since he's been here. Another errant pass by the Gales gives it back to NC State. Paul Thomas on the other bench, meanwhile. This is year number 16 for him at St. Mary's. They had a 10-year stretch of consecutive postseason appearances from 2009 to 2019. So last year when they were 7-9 and nine overall, a bit of a down year for this St. Mary's program. Much younger team than you see on the floor for NC State here. And that's what he was saying on the Zoom call yesterday, that this team you see out here is not the team that played against NC State four years ago. They were more aggressive. They had, you know, some bigs, and, you know, they kept uh, Cronane out of the lane. Catch and shoot. Crutchfield puts it off the front of the cylinder, and nothing doing for NC State offensively so far. Maddie Holland gets into the interior. Upper passes out. And one stolen Damn. away. Wolfpack with transition. Jones to Cunane. The foul, and it just is off the rim. And that's the advantage of NC State. Uh, Kayla Jones is a – yeah, Kayla Jones can get the ball as a stretch four and bring the ball up the court. Here's the steal right here by Kayla Jones. Here she is on the push. That's a great advantage to have. And his Cunane, I oh, wish she could have that one back. That, that should have been an and one. So now the 2021 ACC Tournament MVP at the free throw line drills the first. She's an 80% free throw shooter for a big. Second is in, rips the bottom of the net, makes it four to two in favor of the Wolfpack. Right now it's Conane four, the Gabe's two. <laughs> Kirasomi again, kick out, Bamberger's three, rolls off and is boarded. A foul will keep it with NC State. Nice box out by Jakia Brown-Turner. Keeping the games off the boards. Three team fouls against St. Mary's already here in the first quarter. Work through Kinane again. Reina Perez catches, fires, and a strong rebound. Bamberger. Bamberger with the strong rebound, and NC State's getting one shot. And they're done. Here is Somi again in the lane, going up from the left side with a right, and it just rolls in. Yeah, Kurosomi with an assortment of Kurosomi. floaters and lay ins to start this game, start this game off. She's got four. She only averages six per game this season as the three runs off and another one and done for NC State. Looking down into the corner, Kirasomi gives to Maddie Holland. Bamberger against Kunane, no dribble. No opt to run the offense. Wolfpack playing a straight up man to man. All the way across the offense and it's in and out. Kunane the rebound, quick outlet. Here comes Reina Perez. The Gabes are not a good three-point shooting team. And underneath with one hand from block to block, she navigated under and got it to bank in did Kayla Jones. Kayla Jones. Again, I call her the glue. Here she is on a nice post up. Here she faces up. So I'm going to go with the scoop shot for the M1. 
KJ. And the head coaches vote a first team all ACC performer in the 2020-2021 season completes the three-point play. And it's Wolfpack by three all the way down the floor. The Gales try to get it to Aspen Garrison. And it's a bit overthrown. In 2019, she had a double-double against uh, St. Mary's. She had nine, uh, 14 points and 11 rebounds. Crutchfield got the screen from Kinane, and Perez had a foot out of bounds. Yeah, and that happens a lot. So that brings us to a timeout on the floor. Exactly five to play in the first quarter. Wolfpack by three here on the ACC Network Extra. <laughs> NC State up three early. There's a look at Tacey Whedon, who was a late scratch for St. Mary's in this one. The team's leading scorer and easily their best three-point shooting threat. Not playing today. Wolfpack is doing them. Full court press, trying to speed up the Gabes. Already six turnovers so far for St. Mary's as the floater off back iron is boarded by Elisa Cunane. She gets the outlet to Diamond Johnson into the contest for the first time for NC State. She's been a spark plug off the bench all year long. They give and go, and a swatted shot away from Cunane. Man, I've never seen Cunane get a shot blocked like that. <laughs> Out into the corner, the three drops in for McKenna Mastora. McKenna Mastora blocked an All-American shot, came down and knocked down the three. Kinane right back to business, though. A little shimmy from block to block, banks it in. Kinane has that all day if, she, if they give her the ball. Wolfpack by two. Jade Kirasomi into Bamberger, rocketed out the pass for a mid-range. And Reina Perez brings in the board. Looking ahead, finds Kinane underneath, banks it in after slight hesitation. All day long. Good heads-up pass by Reina Perez. Had her head up, got that pass down to Kinane for the nice land. Gales looking to bounce back. Kirasomi, reckless shot. Sends it over the cylinder, and it's an easy rebound and transition again for NC State. Kunane looked at that. She could knock that three-pointer down. Instead, it's going nice to go with the give and go. Hits it. And the foul off the Reina Perez assist. They're working really well together early in this one. Uh, yes, they are. That was a nice two-man game right here. Nice screen by Kunane with the setup two-man game for the nice – Lay in for the M1. Well, that's double figures already for Elisa Kunane, who failed to do so in each of their last two games. Just two points against Elon and nine in the ACC win on Friday at Pitt. So including the free throw, 11 points for Kunane now. Yeah, I felt that she would have a breakout game uh, today, uh, watching her and shoot around. And uh, just the last two games, she hadn't scored well. She was in foul trouble in the Elon game. And in the uh, Pittsburgh game, they was, it was a three-point game. <laughs> so everybody was raining three-pointers. Johnson gets a hand on the pass, but a three-point shot attempt goes up. Kunane reels in her fifth rebound already as well. Perez, the bounce underneath. Nice find, Kayla Jones. Great bounce pass from Raina Perez on the run to KJ for the two. She put a little spin on that one, too. Mastora looking underneath, and it's knocked away from Amy West. That'll be a foul against Elisa Kunain, though. Kunain was trying to go help side on the defense and the double team and uh, fouled her. Underneath their own basket. No reset. 
to Bamberger on the block, quickly back out, Holland. Outside, the West three is on the way, and Thuds off the iron. Numbers for NC State. Jones after a pump fake, nice dump down to Kunane. Teamwork makes the dream work on that play <laughs> right there. 18 to seven, a nine point lead and a timeout called by St. Mary's. Eleven consecutive points for NC State. They lead it by that. And coming out of the St. Mary's timeout, Gales break the full court pressure. Floater there, Maddie Holland can't hit. And the Wolfpack with the rebound, pushing it down the floor. Perez, jumper in transition. Offensive rebound, Kunane. Nice find by Jones, and Diamond Johnson hits the baseline jumper. That's now eight field goals, Ernie. Five of them assisted for the Wolfpack. As Brandon Perez almost with the steal there. That was great ball movement by the Wolfpack on that series. They've been displaying it throughout these past couple of minutes of game time. 13 straight for the Wolfpack. Gale's looking to break the drought, and the three-point shot is off the mark. Coach on a Zoom call yesterday said if they're not moving the ball around, if they're standing around, they're going to be in trouble. Kayla Jones, wide open look, and it rattles through. Jones has eight on three of five from the field. Yeah. Jimmy West tries the jumper. Right place, right time for Perez on the rebound. Yeah, the Wolfpack is just getting the ball wherever they want to get it here, and they are uh, getting wide open jump shots, and they're taking advantage of it. Perez slips around the Cunane screen and buries it from the free throw line. Smooth jumper there. Raina Perez, coach says she's a pro because of the way she practices. She practices at full speed, you know, doing the drills and uh, and at game speed. So when she gets in the game, it's, it's easy to play. There's another rebound for Elisa Cunane. She's got seven of those. Closing seconds of the first quarter, three-pointers off front iron. But a big statement in the first quarter for NC State, 25 to seven. And Elisa Cunane has 13 points and seven rebounds herself. Here's Cunane right here with the nice and one. Here's Kayla Jones with a nice scoop pass. Cunane with the left hand. It's the final day of V-Week at ESPN, and our partnership with the V-Foundation highlights the urgent need for cancer research and the elimination of racial disparities in cancer outcomes. You can learn more and help support by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Look at that. I know that guy. That's Ernie Myers, yeah, number 3-1, yeah, back no. in the day with the cardiac pack. Yeah, man, that was an uh, unbelievable time. He was a great coach and, uh, you know, taught me a lot about life, you know, and uh, I wish he was still here. No doubt about it. St. Mary's comes out for the second quarter, and Maddie Holland buries the little baby hook. Cool for you, I'm sure, no doubt, to be helping out with, with during V-Week at a game that's at Valvano Arena. This was yeah. this was your team's home venue yeah, when, this when that what, national championship was won. Yeah, this is what we won. played out of, man. And uh, when we won the championship, we came back to this arena, and it, and it was packed. I don't know if it was <laughs> 20,000 people in here, and it was just it was just a magical time. I'm, this arena was a magical place. Uh, Reynolds Coliseum, now uh, Valvano Arena. It's, it's surreal. Nice look by Bamberger underneath. Gets it to Ellie Croco, who checks in for the beginning of the second quarter. She'll go to the free throw line to shoot a couple for the Gales. Camille Hobby's in the game. Hobby, a fantastic showing at Pitt. Yeah, she, uh, she's she been doing yeoman's work the last two games uh, against Elon and Pitt. Uh, just a, a great Backup center, 
uh, could start for a lot of teams <laughs> in, uh, in the ACC. I had a conversation with her at practice saying, hey, you know, like, you know, the transfer portal, all these kids want to transfer and be the star. And she just talked about her parents and commitment and loyalty and, you know, and, and, and she wants to stay here and be a part of these championship teams they've been having the last two years. There's a lot of buy-in all throughout this NC State roster. And look at that find. Camille Hobby with the assist. Jada Boyd banks it in. Camille just lets the game come to her. Uh, she's a good passer, interior passer, and, and she's a great defender down low. Check out the defense. Against West and forces the miss. And now Diamond Johnson, slight hesitation, fires the three. Hobby with the board. Nice move, falling away with the left hand there. Did you see the footwork? You don't see that in men's basketball <laughs> these days, but check out Camille Hobby's footwork. Uh, awesome spin move with the left hand. Nice move, makes it 19 points, the lead for NC State. And a foul at the perimeter, Taylor Dalton. Yeah, here's Camille Hobby, off the miss. She gets the rebound, check out the footwork, left hand right off the glass, patient. She's making it happen. Ernie Myers circa 1983 type stuff, split a tender <laughs> with a pivot there. Yeah, right? absolutely. <laughs> I love her game. Catching fire on the three, Kirasomi can't hit. Long rebound pulled in as it's Isaiah James, the freshman. Watch Isaiah James. I call her the young gun. She scores as soon as she gets into the game. That's a long two for Diamond Johnson. Boyd, the rebound, swooping in, gets fouled, and she'll get a couple at the line. And there's Jada Boyd flying in for the rebound. Again, she's one of the best athletes in the ACC. She's back in action here this afternoon. Jada Boyd. Co-sixth player of the year in the ACC a season ago. 79% on the season as Boyd's first is up and sails through. Yeah, on, she's, she's very athletic again. She gets, uh, you know, offensive rebounds, putbacks. You know, um, she usually takes the top defensive player, uh, offensive player on, off, on, the other, on, the other the, on the other end of the court. Uh, she's just an awesome athlete. Gets both at the line and makes it a 21-point NC State lead. And it just makes NC State a better, a better team when she gets in the game. She's on defensive end. Forces the first miss. The second one maybe a bit rushed. Either way, it's back to NC State. James underneath. Quick Camille. move. And Hobby underneath the basket banks it in. Camille Hobby is just having her way down low. Knocked away briefly by Johnson. Gales recover. Dalton through the lane and just too much traffic there. Here's Isaiah James on the push. Hobby the step back from long range here. I don't know if that was a, <laughs> a good shot right there, but she was feeling it. <laughs> long pass and too strong on the layup. Diamond Johnson. Strong through the lane, what body control. But no basket as it's gonna be a foul on the floor instead. If Diamond Johnson is coming at you on the break and you're backing up, you're at a disadvantage. She's gonna go to the hole every time. Foul is charged to Ellie Croco, so instead of free throws, this will be NC State basketball underneath their own basket. Johnson to trigger it in, the sophomore out of Philadelphia. Finds Kai Crutchfield, her first three-point shot attempt is no good. Just under 60% on the season for Crutchfield, leads the team. Tough pass. Yeah, they keep trying to find Bamberger down low. Not a lot of success in doing so. She's still scoreless. 
Camille thought about it. <laughs> faked it on the long range shot this time. She had a three pointer against Pittsburgh. She can hit that shot. That's her shot right there. There she was, high post, and it's just a bit strong. She had 15 points in just 13 minutes on the floor at Pittsburgh. And Camille Hobby, four points on two or three shooting so far in this one. Nice look underneath. Yeah, that was a nice bounce pass. She just couldn't convert. More transition for the Wolfpack, and it's stolen away. Slow bouncing pass. Kirasomi out to Hannah Rapp here. And that's Mia Griesel. And for the first time today into Bamberg Check and out back Wolfpack outside. Wolfpack players every time. Oh, that's, I thought that was a travel. They didn't call it. <laughs> Air ball on the floater. Hobby with the block. I and it I will stay with St. Mary's, but just three on the shot clock now. Yeah, um, I was, as I was saying, Wolfpack players always have a hand up on defense when they're in front of their players on defense. They always got a hand up, hand in their face um, when they're uh, playing defense. It's funny, Ernie, a few substitutions for NC State as the shot clock expires on St. Mary's. Man, that lineup that just went out could be a starting lineup just yeah. about anywhere in the country, it seems. Big lead for NC State. They're up by 23, and Camille Hobby off of the bench is doing big things underneath the There's basket. Camille, the nice scoop pass to Jada Boyd. Here she is again on the offensive rebound. Nice scoop shot in. Camille Hobby doing work. Second quarter here at Reynolds Coliseum. NC State up big by 23. The Madison. Gabes are in a zone right now. There's another three for NC State. Here we go again. <laughs> Jakia Brown-Turner. Jakia Brown-Turner said, you better play man-to-man -man because I'm going to knock these threes down <laughs> in the zone if you let me. They had 15 it makes from deep against Pitt. That's just their second so far this afternoon. But and that's, but, and that's her shot. Right. That's, she has the smoothest left-hand jumper in, in women's college basketball. Here's the setup. Nice pass by Hayes, and that's all she does. Line it up and knock it down. You mentioned Madison Hayes with the assist. She just entered for the first time today, the Mississippi State transfer, member of the SEC's all-freshman team. And she plays hard. Madison Hayes, she gets in the game. She scraps for rebounds. Uh, she dives on the floor for loose balls. She can knock an occasional three down. Former high school All-American, McDonald's All-American out of Tennessee. There she is at the top of the offense again for NC State. Perez trying to get the ball into Kinane. In the meantime, they'll go around the perimeter. Hayes drives baseline and is shoved. Foul goes against Aspen Garrison and remains NC State basketball. They have to play a zone against the Wolfpack because, <laughs> I mean, they, they, you know, they, they, want, they don't want to get in foul trouble. And, and also they can't play uh, Kunane straight up man-to-man. -man. It's a double-edged sword for Coach Paul Thomas and company, though, because it leaves open those kinds of threes for the Wolfpack. But Jade Kirasomi makes good and delivers on the shot from deep with three. Kirasomi's having a great first half. She has nice drives to the basket, and she just pulled up for a nice three-pointer right there, seven, helping the game. Seven points for Kirasomi now. Here's Raina Perez using the Kunane screen. Nothing but the bottom of the net on the step back. And Kunane set that play up with a nice screen for Perez to knock down that three-pointer. Back to a 25-point Wolfpack lead. Here's Bamberger working on the post. Kunane with the block, tips it up, and it's pulled back in. Gales retain. Just seven to shoot. 
I don't think Bamberger has faced a player like Hunain this season, 6'5", long and athletic. Doing her part, though, set a nice screen for Kirasomi to get another three to fall. She's into double figures with 10 for St. Mary's. She's taking advantage of the opportunity. And a foul. With leading out of the game today. Leia Hannafin charged with the personal. And it's back to NC State. And there's a look again at Tacey Whedon, the senior from Milwaukee, Oregon. Spelled a little bit differently. She had 20 points in 2019 against the Wolfpack as a freshman. That same season set a West Coast Conference single season record, 104 three-pointers made. So, I mean, an incredible threat from beyond the arc missing for St. Mary's. And 17 points a game. Kirasomi misses on the three-point attempt. Here's the wolf pack. Here's the pick and roll. Jessica Timmons gets the jumper to fall. That's the future of the wolf pack right there. Timmons, James, Timmons, all-time leading scorer in high school here in the state of North Carolina out of Charlotte. That's her shot. Absolute star at North Mecklenburg High School as the Gales get another bucket, but seems like NC State is – Trading a couple of shots for one shot at this point. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you what, Ernie, to be James, and that's a nice stuff by Bamberger to get the takeaway yeah, for Yeah, Bamberger Mary's. held her ground, played great, solid defense, got the block on the All-American. But back to my point, Isaiah James, a freshman, Madison Hayes, a sophomore, transferring in from Mississippi State, and then a player like Jessica Timmons, I mean, this is not an easy Wolfpack team to get minutes no. with as a freshman, <laughs> as a sophomore, because they have a, a several five-year players, a six-year player. Yeah, here's, the, here's this freshman class, uh, 36, 64, 40, you know, 43 Simmons in the country. I mean, this, the, this is the future of Wolfpack women's basketball right here on the screen. Um, and like you said, it's hard. Nobody's averaging 30 minutes a game on this team. <laughs> You know, your leading scorer is coming off the bench, um, averaging 20 minutes, averaging 13 points a game, and that's Diamond Johnson. I call her the real one. <laughs> I love it. You got you got a little quippy something for every one of them. Yeah, I know. I've been I've been watching them for a while. <laughs> Allie Bamberger, two for two in the trip, 74 percent from the free throw line this season. Here's Diamond Johnson, the three. Rebounded by Hobby. Bodies are way up for a follow, and it's Look no at Diamond good. Johnson coming out of the trees with the rebound. She's averaging 5.5 .5 rebounds a game. And the assist there got Kayla Jones open from deep. Gales on the other end. Mid-range look. It's a friendly roll for Maddie Holland. Nice move, nice move from Maddie Holland. Nice pull-up jump shot in the lane. There's Diamond. Right through the lane, floats it up and got a friendly little roll that drops in. Did you see how quick her crossover was on that particular play? That lateral quickness is something else with yeah. Diamond Johnson. She's got four. Here's a steal. That's cry cut. And a run out for Crutchfield. Easy lay in for two more. Half century mark for the Wolfpack, and it's not even halftime. Wolfpack picking up the defensive intensity. There they are. Okay. They forced 10 turnovers this half. The NC State defense wide open. Bamberger banks it in as time expires in the first half of action. It was the post players early, Kunane and Hobby, but Diamond Johnson making an impact there in the second quarter as we send it to the break. Here's Diamond Johnson in the trees getting a rebound. Here she is, crossed the over. Nice pass out to KJ. For three, and here she is on the lay-in. Roll it in.
Coliseum, 50-25. to Number two, NC State with the lead over visiting St. Mary's. The resumption of play in the second half coming up shortly, just moments away. Stay with us here on ACC Network Extra. Back with you just about time for the start of the second half. NC State up 50-25 to here on ACC Network Extra. Still with you courtside here at Reynolds Coliseum. Darren Vaughn, Ernie Myers. It's 50 to 25, a 25 point lead for NC State. St. Mary's without its leading scorer, but Jade Kirasome has given them something to be optimistic about. She's got 10 points, one off of her season high already. Yeah, she's picking up the offensive slack, um, knocking down some three point shots and going to the hole with some nice scoop shots. Here she is right here, with a nice pull up three pointer. She's knocking down another one. She's just been a, a nice offensive spark plug uh, for the games. Meanwhile, for NC State, it was all about the bigs early. Elisa Kunane, we'll call it a get right game for her. Yes, she just, uh, that was a nice pick and roll right there. Nice scoop pass to the hole. Uh, she's just having her way down here. She's having a great time. Kunane, 13.7 rebounds, and Camille Hobby off the bench. Making big waves as well. Four points, couple of boards for her. Camille with a nice spin. Hook shot to the basket. She's in tune. So exactly a 25-point lead. Nice clean numbers for NC State <laughs> in this one, right? 50 yeah. points, 50% 50 <laughs> from the field. Maybe one less point in the paint, and that is going to be a little bit neater. But Jade Kirasomi, we mentioned four of eight from the field, Kirasomi with those couple of three-point shots, two of four from deep. She came in only 15% from three on the season. The Furman transfer, once upon a time, a paladin here in the Carolinas. She's telling coach, put me in more, you know. <laughs> Next game, I, I, I could do this. <laughs> she stepped up in some moments for there you see him, Coach Paul Thomas and staff. Without his leading scorer entering this contest, a late scratch. It's a, a bit of an unexpected one. Certainly not something that was on his radar when you and I, Ernie, spoke with him yesterday. No, he was talking about another player who's playing uh, in the game, Holland, that, that might not play. Uh, that, that wasn't even on the radar. Another look at Tacey Whedon. 17 points per game is... Hard to replace against any team, especially an NC State squad that's number two in the country. And, you know, she's a senior, and she's got a lot of experience. On top of that, you know, she's a leader. Um, it's, it's hard to replace that at the last minute. NC State picking up right where they left off. Reina Perez, another make from three-point land. That's her second. She's now two of four from three-point range. Madeline Holland for the Gales. Down into the block, out to Kirasomi. They swing it around. Amy West, now Allie Bamberger, rejected the first time. Follow was short, and Kunane there with the board in the outlet. They're not letting her get anything in this game. Perez lobs it underneath, and Jones through traffic, banks it in for two. Assist number four for Reina Perez. Pull up jumper, and Holland gets the three on the other end. Pack moving the ball around the perimeter. Here's the, here's the two-man game. Ty Crutchfield contested long two. She's been a bit quiet today, just two points for Crutchfield. But that's the thing about this NC State team, Ernie. The great players and the great scorers don't have to do it all the time for them no. to be successful as a team. Nice find underneath, and it's laid in by Taylor Dalton. They have seven players that can give you 20 points on a given night. That is, that's, he has an embarrassment of riches <laughs> on his team. That's what I, I would conclude somebody like opposing head coach Paul Thomas might refer to as a problem, Ernie, that's, right? That's, yeah. it's a problem. Kinane with the offensive rebound. Hacked on her way up to the basket. She'll get a couple more free throws where she is three for three so far today. 
Here's Kune. Here's Raina Perez on the push. Taylor Jones with a nice lay-in. She's got 13 points, as did Elisa Cunane prior to that free throw falling. 14 for her now and makes it a 26-point NC State lead. And Cunane now 5 of 5 from the stripe. She has a nice touch from the free throw line. Again, shooting 80% for a big or for anybody in these days. Free throw shooting is a, kind of like a lost art. Yeah, one of the more, <laughs> she's one of the more reliable free throw shooters in the country in women's basketball. West in the corner, thought about the three instead. We'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kinane. Got her on the fake and flushes it through. Searching down low, Jones back out to Perez. Floats it up, somehow finds Kayla Jones. The layup is off, and Kunane, after the rebound, has it taken away. If Kunane on that rebound would have just grabbed it and gathered herself and went back up, she probably would have got a three-point play. A tie-up on the entry pass to Bamberger on the other side. And it's a foul against Elisa Kunane. That's number three for her. So she'll check out. You mentioned a couple of games so far this season where she's been in a bit of foul trouble, including Elon a couple of games ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, she's been in some foul trouble. Um, that's the game she had two points in that game. Had a lot of rebounds, but didn't score well. Nice ball movement by St. Mary's. They get it to Kirasomi again. Rips the bottom of the net with the three. Kirasomi. It's like, Coach, put me in the game. You know, I can do this on a regular basis. That's a new season high for her, 13 points for the redshirt junior. All I need is some time, Coach. Get me in the game. <laughs> she had scored 11 three separate times coming into today. Nice pass out. Bang. And that's what. So a timeout on the floor. It's a 22-point lead for NC State, 648 to play in the third. <laughs> NC State up big here in the third quarter. Darren Vaught, Ernie Myers back with you on ACC Network Extra as the Wolfpack from underneath their own basket. Couple of substitutions, that dangerous second unit. Diamond to Johnson, Camille Hobby. Five to shoot. Jones looking for the extra pass. Hobby falling away, skips it over the cylinder, but Diamond Johnson there for the offensive board. She's averaging 5.5 rebounds a game. She has two offensive rebounds this game. That one was tipped away at the pass by Kayla Jones, and it's out of bounds. But Jade Kirasomi, a bright spot for St. Mary's. Their only player into double figures today. She had 11 points, three separate occasions, but a new season high of 13 on five of nine shooting, including three three-pointers. Diamond Johnson, the dump down low, and Camille Hobby lofts it up and in. Yeah, she got the start, and she was just ready to play. I mean, you know, you got to give her credit. She's usually coming off the bench, and she gets to start, and she's, she's producing. Pass misses. Squeezed by Reina Perez in transition. Kicks out. Jakia Brown-Turner, the step back, falls through. That's her shot set up by Reina Perez. But Jakia Brown-Turner with the step back fake, that is her shot. She can make that all day long. Brown-Turner's got eight as a foul. We'll slow things down on the opposite end. Second three-point make for Jakia Brown-Turner. She's two for four. NC State as a team now six of 13 from beyond the arc today. Amy West to the free throw line, the rusher junior. Just three for seven for the year. 
Line drives one and it rattles through. Second of two. Shakes out. Diamond Johnson on the rebound and push. Johnson short on the jumper. Here's Holland heading up the offense for St. Mary's. Gets it back from Bamberger, block to block. West leaves it short, and it's poked away. Yeah, she brought the ball down. That's what you never do as a big person when you got the little guards around you. Bring the ball down. And then Perez rips it away. Out to Brown Turner again for three. She leaves that short. All the way down, Kirasomi finds Bamberger, but no good on the shot. She's really struggled from the field in this one. Yeah, she has some size on her in this game, and it's affecting her, uh, her game. When she's down low, she got some size, contesting those shots. Here's Perez again, a bounce down low. Hobby. Misses spinning from the basket. Kirasomi pushing it on the break for St. Mary's. Still looking to Bamberger. Nice slipped pass over to West. Tipped out. Hesitation. Dalton floats it up and in. So a finally, a bit of a scrappy back and forth there. Yeah, that was a beautiful pass by Bamberger. Uh, she just couldn't convert on that one. Johnson pulls up. Long distance on the two and gets it to fall. Johnson just makes it look easy. She's got six on three of eight shooting. Incredible find down low, and Kira Somi, after the screen was rolling, that pass went right between three <laughs> NC State defenders. He definitely did. Here's Brown Turner with another three, and it's in. You just can't leave her wide open like that, especially not on the baseline. Jakia Brown-Turner into double figures. She has 11 in NC State, again up by 27. West on the block against Hobby. Tried to hit a cutter and a foul. We'll keep it here with St. Mary's. It brings us to a timeout on the floor. NC State up big, the number two team in the country on its home floor. St. Mary's trailing by 27 here at NC State and a long, long way from home, Ernie. About as long as it could possibly be uh, yeah. staying in the continental United States here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of mileage. <laughs> 2,800 miles plus. I don't believe that's as a bird flies, but well, you know, the, the thing that they might have working to their advantage is that five of these players are from either Australia or New Zealand for Coach Paul Thomas. Maybe the, the long flights are just kind of business as usual for them. Maybe. I don't know. As yeah. long as they're not taking I-40 all the way across, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> that includes, of course, Jade Kirasomi, their leading scorer so far in this one with 15. Out of Australia, here she is again from the top. Weaving through two defenders. Gets the bucket and the foul. A chance at three the hard way. She's going for it. She's going for it. Nice, nice drive to the basket. Scoop shot for the three-point play. The foul is charged to Diamond Johnson. Kirasomi to the free throw line. Can't get it to roll in. She's one off of a career high of 18. Say, Coach, start me. I'm a starter. <laughs> Well, she's now well above her season average for minutes played. And she's doing this in, in, in against the number two ranked team in the country. And there's a bit of a hook as Kai Crutchfield tried to navigate the perimeter. Charge to Mastora, number one on her. Well, St. Mary's needed someone to step up. The team's leading scorer, a late scratch, so that's 17 points per game. 
that we're going to go unaccounted for. There's Jada Boyd flying to the basket for the rebound. And a foul underneath. And that's what I'm talking about in her athleticism, you know, on the offensive glass, even you know, on the defensive glass. She's flying through the lane, grabbing rebounds, putting them back up. You got to put a body on her when the offensive rebound goes up. It's enough to have to worry about an Elisa Kunain, who is you know, stationary for the most part between the blocks, right? But then if you're, if you're overly consumed mentally with that part of NC State's game, you forget that in comes Jones out from the perimeter, right? She can, yeah. she can rebound too, and she'll sneak in there and get it. As she hits the first free throw, makes it a 26-point lead again for the Wolfpack. Boyd two for two on the trip. She has six, including four of four from the line. Not much of anywhere to go down in that corner for St. Mary's. We'll get back out to Kirasomi, under 10 to shoot. Bounce out to West, gets by Kunane, and puts it in off the window. Nice move to the basket. Off the dribble. So Wade West. with five points. Watch out, watch out. And after the miss, it's tipped away out of bounds. And we'll go back to St. Mary's. Wolfpack on the offensive glass, flying around trying to get these uh, offensive boards. There's a three hoisted by St. Mary's. They get the offensive rebound themselves. That's number seven for them to NC State's 11 as it's tipped out of bounds. Well, they're taking long shots, and, and the Wolfpack players are not boxing out and finding the man, and they're getting a the long rebound. Paul Thomas, 29 plus years as a coach, 275 wins at St. Mary's alone. A former Division II National Coach of the Year. Shot clock hits zero, but an offensive rebound and a foul goes against the Wolfpack. They're not boxing out again. You know, it was a rush shot. They played great defense for 29 seconds, <laughs> and, uh, and they didn't box out, and the Gabes get the rebound. Jada Boyd's second personal foul sends Mia Griesel to the free throw line. First is off the side. Griesel has struggled to find her way into the lineup last year she played in five games was a big part of their game plan in those five games but then got sidelined with a back injury so she's back in the lineup and at mostly full strength this season Johnson, that quick first step, gets it to roll in off the front side of the rim. Did you see the head fake first and froze the defensive player, and then she darted to the basket for the nice scoop in. That's a really impressive move by Diamond Johnson. St. Mary's continues to work through post play, and a foul goes. Oh, traveling. Oh, that's the travel. Here's Diamond Johnson, head fake, scoop shot. Unbelievable talent. What makes that so impressive to me, Ernie, too, is she practically was faking before she received the pass. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she was, was setting up run. her feet at, in a certain way to suggest that she was going to do one thing with the basketball. And then the ultimate deception did something completely differently. Yeah, but there she turned the ball over, and, and that's one thing that's about her game. She leads the team in turnovers. She has 30 of them on the season right now, and that was kind of like an unforced turnover. Yeah, just a pass. Just left a bad, too short, yeah, just tried to float it up over the defender. Yeah. 
The pick and roll with Bamberger. Pushed back and off balance. Floats it up. Block. And zeros to signal the end of the third quarter, 71 to 47. Westmore pretty happy with his bunch through this one, the number two team in the country up with one quarter to play. Back with you at Reynolds Coliseum, NC State up big over St. Mary's. There you see the St. Mary's coach. Paul Thomas, who told us yesterday about Team Impact and its landing of Ayla Zawadzki on their official roster. If you go to St. Mary's Athletics website, Ayla is listed as a player on this team. Team Impact, an organization that pairs a young fan with a team, in this case, Ayla, who signed with the team. I used my air quotes, but I guess it's official. It's on the, it's it's a, on the website, Ernie. It's official. At it's age official. eight. And it's beautiful. Yeah. Diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and celiac disease, a big part of the team's spirit, Coach Thomas said, especially when they play at home. And she's there every time. Madison Hayes, a strong bucket to begin the fourth quarter. She got that down low and drop stepped and banged that one off the glass and then. St. Mary's. With an answer, nifty move, McKenna Mastora. She just drove right by James. <laughs> NC State with a young lineup in. Now in the late goings here. Out to Madison Hayes, catching fire, and it rips the bottom of the net. Madison Hayes getting into the three-point game. And the, the five you see out here right now is the future of NC State basketball, women's basketball. With Genesis Bryant and James and Timmons. And There's Maddie Holland, Mary, buries the mid-range. Maddie, and she's limping. And she knocked that one down. Very obvious remiss on her face as well. She's been dealing with that ankle injury all season long as there's another three-point shot attempt missed this time by NC State. Out to the perimeter, poked away and stolen. I think James is going all the way with this one. The fake turns and hits it, nothing but net. That's her game, man. She can score the ball. Good-looking young player, Isaiah James. Long three, and it's kicked away out of bounds. And we'll supply an opportunity for a couple of substitutions for St. Mary's. Maddie Holland will be one of them. Limited to just five games entering today with that ankle injury. Team's second leading scorer a year ago, as you see there. Recently surpassed the 400 career assist mark, second in program history. And she's an important piece of what the Gales are trying to do this season. Down to Bamberger. Zips out, perimeter shot. That was a nice kick out by Bamberger. She just couldn't knock it down. Genesis Bryant, the touch into the corner. Threes long, James the rebound. Into the paint herself, and it rattles through. James on the nice Rebound, offensive rebound and put back. She just gets buckets when she gets in the game. She's it's a quick couple of baskets for her. Four points. Good ball movement by St. Mary's here. And a three-point make, McKenna Mastora. She's now two of four from beyond the arc. You saw There's Westmore there sort of right pulling, back, pulling back the reins a bit. Here's Hayes from three. In. <laughs> nice setup by Genesis Bryan. She drew the defense to her, kicked it out to the corner to Hayes to knock down the three-pointer. Madison Hayes has eight points 
on three of three shooting. As the tipped pass out of bounds is being rewarded to NC State. Though the St. Mary's bench does not agree. James blows right by her defender. Another basket for James. She's got six. She, she's, she, she can play, and she knows she can play. <laughs> you know, she, she gets to the basket anytime she wants to. Here's a cutter on the baseline. Mastora reels it back in herself. St. Mary's over to the wing and the step back rattles off another offensive board and a second chance. And that's what happens when you shoot those long three-pointers and they, and they don't go in and you get the long rebound. And again, the Wolfpack is not finding their man and putting a body on him. There's Bamberger going to work against Hobby, spins and banks it in for two and the foul. So a chance at a three-point play for Allie Bamberger who has had her fair share of struggles today. Just eight points for her now. Bamberger just wasn't going to be denied on that play. She muscled that one in. She's been struggling the goal game, but that was a great post-up play by Bamberger. Two for two from the free throw line so far today. Her third attempt is up and in. She's got nine points, eight rebounds, and leads the team with three assists as well. So they're still going to her, running the offense through her despite her struggles from the field. She's still on the verge of a double-double in this game. Timmons has it knocked away. Mastora in transition, quick up with the left hand. Mastora has a nice little go to the whole game as well with the left hand on that break. Bryant, the mid-range. NC State not really slowing things down or calling off the dogs per se. They can't because they're playing for time. Even though this game is a blowout, coach is watching this game and evaluating the talent. And if you want to stay in the game, you got to keep playing. Keep playing like sophomore Madison Hayes. Couple of big baskets here early in this fourth quarter, including this one from deep, the sophomore making her mark out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. They've got scorers everywhere, don't they, Ernie? Yes, they do. Back with you on ACC Network Extra. How about that? An assistant coach for the opposing team, St. Mary's, with some ACC ties. Mariah Moore had some big games here at Reynolds Coliseum herself. As many as 31 points in one of those, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I was at that game. She did work. Timmons fouled in transition for NC State, so a couple of free throws coming. And this, Ernie, just an opportunity to get some of the younger players who, albeit, are already getting time in games <laughs> this season for NC State. Maybe just to get them a little bit more. Because they've been blowing people out, and they, you know, they they able to get this time, and and this is valuable time. Again, these players are the future of NC State basketball. There you saw on the far block, number 32, Sophie Hart, in for the first time today, the freshman. Now on defense against Ali Bamberger, who spins and banks it in for two. She's now into double figures, 11 points for her. That was a nice power move in by Bamberger, taking the freshman to the basket. Jada Boyd, hesitation, long stride underneath the basket and has it tipped away. Bamberger has a double-double. From the perimeter. No, she has nine rebounds. Yeah, one rebound still away from the double-double as that one's knocked away from McKenna Mastora. 
And it stays with St. Mary's. Still plenty of time. I mean, she's been strong on the boards for St. Mary's. Definitely a likelihood at this point. Just two to shoot for St. Mary's, and Bamberger navigates her way through the paint to float it up and in. Yeah, that was a nice jump hook shot. Hart with an extra step in the paint and turns it over. So it comes back to St. Mary's. And for Paul Thomas, St. Mary's head coach, Ernie, he told us yesterday, in addition to hopefully trying to come in here and pull off an upset victory over NC State, which is likely not happening at this point as the jumper falls, he really just likes these games so that his team can grow. He alluded yeah, he, to the, the, the disparity in experience between these two squads. This is, comparatively speaking, a very inexperienced team. St. Mary's yes. team. And he likes stacking up these opponents as opposed to he sort of referred to, I'm paraphrasing, you know, some, some lower-level teams in California. Yeah, that he gets nothing. Yeah, he, he, his team will get nothing out of it. Exactly. So he, he likes this trip to Carolinas, to the Carolinas in particular. He mentioned Coastal Carolina, who's off to a hot start this season. Obviously, always a chance to grow when you play a number two team in the country. Yeah, it gets them ready for the WCC. Six on the shot clock. Timmons dribbles around the screen, buries the mid-range. She's a good-looking freshman. I mean, she has a nice shot. She's not afraid to take it. You mentioned her high school accolades earlier. I mean, she, that's a 2,000-point scorer. Oh, yeah. At the um, prep level. I at mean, the prep she's level. She's got a promising future as a scorer here for the Wolfpack. One substitution for St. Mary's. Allie Bamberger will get a breather. Wolfpack going down low. Jada Boyd backing down her defender. That's her game, man. She got position, and she powered it up. Three-point shot attempt, quick on the other side. Ricochets off back iron. James is going all the way with this. Oh, In nice drive, pass. James bounces oh. it, and the bucket and the foul for Timmons. She'll get a chance at three. James said, Ernie, I can pass the ball, too. <laughs> I can pass. Here she is. She said, Ernie thinks, always thinks he, and he knows what some, I'm doing. She put Look some spin on that. Yeah, a little bit of mustard to split some defenders. Yeah. Isaiah James. Freshman to freshman on that play. You keep saying it. That's the future. Yeah, that's the future. We can, of, uh, we can expect a lot of that in the next few years for NC State. A wide open look from distance buried by Taylor Dalton. She was wide open. They moved the ball around the perimeter, got a wide open three-pointer, and she buried it. NC State gets the stop and the defensive rebound. Jada Boyd playing it safe just to make sure. <laughs> yeah, she said, I don't want to pick that up. That might be a, a double dribble. <laughs> nice fake. James dribbles inside, and the jumper from the baseline is good. She is skilled. Eight points, five rebounds for Isaiah James now with a minute remaining in the fourth quarter. A couple of steals as well, that one emphatic assist 
on the fast break. Good quick work for her in about 17 minutes on the floor tonight. Yeah, she's athletic, and she just has a feel for the game. She's, she's, she's offensively gifted. St. Mary's trying to make something of this possession, and they get something out of it. Hannah Rapp with the three. They've knocked down a lot of three-point shots this game <laughs> for a team that uh, doesn't shoot that well from three-point range. Especially without their best three-point shooter in the lineup. They're now 8 of 20 from deep. That one falls short for NC State. What a save there, Genesis Bryant, keeping it in play. Three-point shot attempt. James rips the bottom of the net. I'm telling you, James, man, she's a, she's a young gun, and she, she's got a lot of bullets in her gun. I'm telling you, she can play. 11 points for Isaiah James now. As the clock hits zero in quarter number four. And NC State gets three digits up on the scoreboard. 101 to 73, a big offensive output as Westmore gets, you see it there, career win at number 200 here as the leader of the Wolfpack. One of the best coaches in the game, in the women's game. Coach Westmore. Quick to do it as well. As you see there, fifth fastest at an ACC program all time to get to win number 200. So for my friend Ernie Myers and the rest of our fantastic crew here at Reynolds Coliseum, the final score is NC State 101, St. Mary's 73. I'm Darren Vaught saying so long and to watch the entire game on replay as well as others on our family of ESPN networks. Hit up watchespn.com or the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.